Aya, and welcome back to Dawn Chorus. The game that teaches us that... Uh... You know what, Lug, I'm just gonna... Just gonna take your thing. Uh, yeah. It's Mr. Meow Meow time. I... Wait, did I say that Bjorn was going to be next? I, I can't remember if I did. I'm I'm sorry if you wanted Bjorn to be next. And Axel, why are you pissed off? Anyways, let's just hop right in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can just uh, do go into it. Devin... I'm really going to ask my teacher if I can stay in his room tonight, aren't I? He's hard to miss, easily being the tallest person here. Among the students here, only Rune is anywhere near his height. He's standing next to, pro next to Professor Arne, who is instructing him. I don't know, I don't know. I'm either going to do Toril for Bjorn last. I feel like, I feel like that'd make the most sense. Toril for Bjorn last. Maybe now is not the best moment. I'll try doing as much as I can myself, and maybe Professor Arne will leave Devin alone in the meantime. Okay, this can't be too hard. I turn on the sky map again and look over the surface, searching for any clues. Finally, I find a button that opens a menu with all the major objects in the solar system, obviously including Saturn. I signed up for Streamlabs and tried to do a test stream on with Twitch, but it ended up in a complete disaster. What do you mean? What do you mean, it ended up a complete disaster? Maybe it is easy after all. After a bit of struggling with the interface, I finally located Saturn in the night sky, and managed to point my telescope roughly at it. I battled with the equipment for a bit before I noticed the smaller finder scope attached at the bottom of the tube. That helped a lot. Every once in a while, I glanced at Devin, but it looked like Professor Arne was helping him with the task and didn't plan on going anywhere else. I hope you won't misunderstand me, although I'm not even sure myself what my intentions are. For today, I had a completely different image of him, and now I can't help but feel intrigued. Other than what I managed to ask him at the reception, I still know so little about him. I usually spend time with people my age, so talking to Devin feels much different. It's like, when I'm with the people that are my age, friends or other students, it's like staring at a pond. I can measure a pond, count the pebbles on its coast, and if the surface is calm and the water clean, I can even look at the bottom. With Devin, I feel like standing in front of an incomprehensible lake, one whose other side I can barely see. Okay, um, what was your bit rate? See, the only reason why my streams are even remotely stable is because I have a bit rate that's at least 6,000. So it's Seamit's Devin for the second route? Also, you did decide to not go back and see all the different choices before the route split. Yeah, yeah, um... See, see, I, I suffer from this condition called I'm extremely fucking lazy. That, that's about it. I, I just didn't feel like holding down control because I feel bad whenever I just hold down control. Even though it can be, even though it is useful in a lot of cases, I still feel bad. It's a bit intimidating. I feel like I'm on a complete I feel like I'm on completely new territory. Yeah, your bit rate. Um It's a number should be in the bottom left corner. Because you're offline, I think. I think because you're offline, it should say 0 kbps. A very stable amount is a very stable bit rate is 6000. KBPS. It's time to drink water. Per second. It's able to dip it's time below to drink that every water. once in a while. But it's that, time to drink water. I feel like that's the most stable and also actually usable. I feel like um something that you could do is Google. Just just Google. Uh, stream froze how to fix because that's that's actually how I fix most issues with the stream Google it's a bit intimidating I feel like I'm in a completely new territory 
Now only some fine adjustments with the precise knobs of the tripod the telescope is standing on, and everything should be ready. Good old reliable Google. Letting out a relieved sigh, I smile, feeling quite proud of myself. I lean in and look into the telescope. In the middle of the image, there's a rust-colored orb with a ring around it. I was expecting to look at a flat image, but it's very real and three-dimensional. The planet casts a shadow on one side of the rings, and there's a thin shadow of the ring on the planet itself, too. It's not too big, but I see it very clearly. Okay, that was something. Because I, I wanted to do Devon next. Why does anyone do anything? Look up at the sky dotted with twinkling stars. Saturn's now only a pale dot, tiny and distant. It looks nothing like the massive planet I saw just a moment ago. And it's just one pale dot among many. I glance at Devin again, and he's still talking with Professor Arne. Maybe this isn't the best idea after all. Sure don't want to have to ask him with another teacher around. They could misunderstand me. And I don't really have time to wait, so I guess I'll have to ask someone else. But I still haven't found a place to stay this night. Who should I ask next? No! Damn it! Wait, is this part of Devin's route? Where we have to stay with someone else instead of him? Because if so, then I'm sad. Or did I royally fuck up? Uh, yeah. Damn it. Damn it. I fucked up. Why? Why? Okay. Yeah. Hang on. I'm just gonna do this the lazy, the lazy asshole way. Yes, default name. Pull down control. Yep, it's speed running time. Yay! I'll have plenty of time to look around, though. For now, I can just drop off my stuff and head back to the lobby. Maybe I'll check if Miko got his room yet, or I could go pay Lake a brief visit. Go see... Yeah, we're gonna stay here. We're, we're gonna... Or I could just stay here and unpack. There is no hurry. I have the whole trip to stay with the others. I pick up my bag and take out my instant camera. It's only for special occasions, but this certainly is one. I think Lake is the, uh, Dev- Yeah, Lake is the Devon option. Uh, which one's the Devon option? We're just fucking speed running. Actually, we're just- Oh my god. Oh my god, fuck off. Talk to Rune. Oh, don't worry, Devin. We're only go to coach Devin for help. I think we did peppermint. We're just fucking speed running. Jorgen and Travis. Which one's the Devon option? Fuck. Fucking Devon option. Is this is this how we're spending the first half of stream just trying to get the Devon option? Hang on. If we go to the cafeteria, then we'll be on Bjorn's path and we go to Forest. Who the fuck is Klaus? Who's Klaus? Klaus is the cat. Is he another route? The cat with gr Oh, him! Oh, him! Hmm. Someone we miss? Okay. Okay. Uh, fuck, fuck. You know what? You know what? Google. 
Okay, Google. How to smooch Devin Don Cortian. Okay, okay, it's Klaus. Wait, maybe. Google. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe. Uh, let's go to the forest. I might have just been on a walk, but I don't feel like sitting in the guest house all day. It's a good idea to be outside the city again, and I want to make the best of that time. Of course, I'm not just going to sit indoors. I won't let some snow and mild cold stop me. Damn, it's cold. A particularly strong gust of wind makes me shiver uncontrollably. Good thing I got a jacket from Devon, otherwise I would freeze here. Once again, I direct my steps toward the nearby forest. For now, it's better to stay on the path. Falling snow makes it much easier to get lost in the deep forest. Walking idly and enjoying this moment of quiet, I suddenly hear rustling somewhere behind me. Turning around, I see the figure in a black jacket walking in my direction. He's not looking at me. Instead, his gaze is fixed somewhere in the distance. We're gonna- we're gonna keep silent. He simply passes me, not saying a word, not even acknowledging my presence as if I would be just another tree. Suddenly he stops, turns around, and looks at me. Hey! Do I know you? Not yet, I don't believe so. What are you doing here? Me? I'm on a walk, aren't you too? Name's Arvo, by the way, studying cognitive science. I'm really happy to be on this camp. I'm a freshman, so it's my first one. I'm Klaus. You could say that, I just like being surrounded by trees. It was nice meeting you. Bye. And just like that, he turns around and continues walking down the path. Okay, that was weird. I haven't seen him before, but he must have come with us, so it's likely... So likely it's not the last time we meet. Wait, where is he? Only blinked and he disappeared from my view completely and I'm left alone. I'm gonna head back to the guest house. I don't even know if I want to find him, to be honest. Trying to talk with him didn't really go well before, so why should it now? I'll walk around the forest some more, enjoying the serene scenery before heading back to the guest house. Miko's room. I like it. Sounds good. I wanted to see Devin. I thought I might find him here. Go to the swimming pool with Devin. I don't want to stay long under the cold water, so I finish showering quickly and leave for the swimming pool. He turns around and notices me approaching. Oh, I didn't think he would be this ripped. He certainly looked like the athletic type. He's a coach after all, but I didn't expect to see chiseled abs on him. Maybe he was a sports player like Rune too. He seems pretty young usually. I wonder how old he could be. And why did he become a coach so soon? Most of the coaches I've seen were in their mid-30s to mid-40s. Hello, Devin. Arvo, you didn't forget anything, did you? You know you're... naked. I met Rune in the locker room and he told me that it wouldn't be a problem if I went skinny dipping. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. Hey, it's not a big problem for me if it's not a problem for you. In the meantime, Rune comes out of the showers and approaches us too. Hey there, Devin. Hello. Hey, how are you holding up? Look behind me and see the bulky Black Panther standing in front of me. Fine, I just need a moment to catch my breath. But everything's fine! That's good. You got me worried a little bit. You look like you were going to pass out. It's not that bad. I'm just a bit out of shape, that's all. It takes me a long moment to stabilize my breathing, but I finally stop panting and take a few deep breaths. If you attend my, cla if you attend my class more often, you'd be doing better, you know. Ugh, so I noticed that's one topic I hoped you wouldn't bring up here. Oh, hiya, cats. Yeah, we're trying to do Devin's route. 
and it's been 15 minutes, almost 16, and we still aren't on his route yet. We wouldn't bring up here. I know, it's just sports were never my forte. I have some bad memories regarding PE classes. Whenever I go to them, I get anxious and start feeling awful, so I usually have to stay in my room. Oh, I had no idea. Hope that I didn't cause any of those memories, and if I did, I'm sorry. I know I may not be the most approachable teacher ever. No, no, don't worry. I just had my share of humiliations in middle school and high school, but I'd rather not remember it. Are we playing this game through ludicrous speed? Yeah, yeah, we're going fast. Going fast. <laughs> the mock is route. I'd rather not remember it. You've been nothing but kind to me, actually. I'm sorry I've been missing your class, Devin. I promise I'll be better about that. That's good to hear. Well, not the part about humiliations, of course. I understand that very well. I can tell you in confidence that I just liked PE as a student, too. Only started to take it seriously when I went to college. Let's just say that I've had my share of humiliations, too. Oh, I never would have guessed. I wonder what he means by that. It's hard for me to imagine this ripped panther standing before me ever getting bullied. I suggest getting back to the changing room, though. I'm done swimming, and I'd feel much more comfortable having this discussion if you had some clothes on. I actually forgot that I have everything hanging out, and I'm standing right in front of a teacher. Yeah, that must feel really uncomfortable for him. I look away, abashed. Sure, I'm done, too. I don't think I could swim even one more length. You two really have some serious stamina. It's just practice, that's all. Long hours of excruciating practice almost every day of the week for a few years. You could get to that point, too, even now. All you need is determination. Okay, Undertale. Pick something you want to be good at and stick with it. It's one of the best pieces of advice I can offer. Rune joins us as we leave the swimming pool. Ooh, that was good. I really need a good, tiring training like this. That's ungodly. I'm going to tag along with Rune and Devin. Oh, that was good. <sighs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Swimming really made me hungry. Probably could have eaten anything and still would have loved it. It was really good. I don't feel like doing anything now. I got the big lazy. Rune leans back on the couch with his arms behind his head, crossing his legs. Devin is sitting next to him, looking out the window with his arms crossed on his chest. After dinner, we split from the rest and came to the common room to just chill together. Blake went with Jorgen to play to the lobby to play some table paw ball, and Miko disappeared somewhere with Bjorn just after we finished. I decided to tag along with these two instead. After all, I'm going to make some new friends here, and surprisingly, I feel relaxed with Rune and Devin. Even though initially they both seemed unapproachable, now that I got to know them, I feel comfortable in their company. There's something calming about them. Yeah, how did you like dinner, Arvo? We really liked it. We don't like disrespecting cooks here. Unless they deserve it. Do not disrespect a chef. Unless they deserve it. I have only met one cook. Who deserved to be disrespected. And they were a former boss of mine. Fucking hated them. Still do. To give you an idea of how much I hated them, this was a month after I quit working there. I was in I was in Walmart of all places. Doing grocery shopping. I was grocery shopping at Walmart. I remember uh, telling someone about them, and I just called them a bitch. Well, they were well, they were within earshot of that. And even after that, while well, I was chilling with some friends outside of that place, I again called them a bitch. They heard me, and they couldn't do shit about it. They were not a good boss. They were not a good boss. They did a good job with it. I really liked it. Just like lunch. Yeah, they really know what they're doing. 
The vegetables were perfectly roasted, spicy, and still with a hint of sweetness. Girl, how long are their ears? See, that's the thing. That's the thing. Unlike me, and I feel like several other people, they didn't destroy their hearing. Granted, I still have decent hearing. I mean, it's still pretty... I still have pretty good hearing, but... When I'm in my 60s, <laughs> I can say bye-bye to that. The sauce was a great match for the for the rest of the dish, too. Its slight acidity was a nice contrast with the savory veggie balls. <laughs> That's the thing! <laughs> That's the thing! <laughs> Both times, they were in earshot. They couldn't do jack shit. I think this was when I still, this was while I still actively shaved. Here's the thing, here's the thing. If I were to shave my beard, somehow get rid of the dark circles under my eyes, and just clean, clear out my face in general, I would look, four, I would look like I'm 14 years old. I have baby face. I would look like I was 14. And back when I was 14, I swear to God, someone thought I was 8. When I was 13 at the time. When I was 13, someone thought I was 8 years old. And now I, and now if I were to shave the beard, clean the face, get rid of the bags under my eyes. I, I swear to God, if I shave the beard, I don't look like an adult. I look like a tall child. Like a fucking tall child. Just like, why do you have those bags under your eyes, tall child? Get some sleep, tall child. And it's like, no, fuck you. I'll sleep if I, I'll sleep when I want. I already read that. Oh, those pancakes. Sorry about the blueberries, by the way. I hope you both had some too. Not really. Rune looks at me with hope in his eyes. Maybe a few. Devin snorted loudly. By the way, I'm surprised that you decided to tag along with us. What do you mean? Most wouldn't want to hang out with the teacher. Thanks for sticking around. Devin gives him a disapproving look. No wonder, that was pretty blunt. I actually sometimes hung out with the teacher. Wait, was he? Yeah, he was a teacher. He was a teacher. He was. I actually hung out with multiple teachers. See, there was, uh... <laughs> Arvo got that A-. minus. Devin gives him a disapproving look. No wonder, that was pretty blunt. To be honest, I didn't give it much thought before. If Devin feels comfortable with us, then why should I feel weird about it? How did you two become friends? When I moved to Norway, I didn't know anyone here. Not even one person. With just one bag of personal belongings, I rented a small flat in the city center and started to look for a job in education. I thought that moving here from outside Europe would be harder. They allowed you to just stay like that? I had it easy with the relocation since my mother was Norwegian. Here, citizenship is determined by the nationality of the parents, so I was born with a dual citizenship. I do have family here, but on one of the islands pretty far north. I was lucky enough to find an open position for a coach at a university, but beyond some casual chats with other teachers there, I found it really hard to get to know anyone. I quickly found out that while Norwegians are really nice, they tend to keep to themselves much more than Americans do. Rune was the first person I talked with beyond exchanging pleasantries. He was in the group I was teaching at first, and, I, and he heard that I recently moved to Norway. So he came to me after classes and asked how I was liking it here. When he learned that I barely talked with anyone, he offered to take me on a tour around the city, and I agreed. That was really nice of him. I probably wouldn't have the guts to do something like that myself. It turned out that he's a good guy, knowledgeable too, so he started to hang out more often. Good to hear you found someone to help acclimate you here, Devin. I know it helps a lot. Meeting new people as a student is relatively easy. We're basically forced to spend a huge part of our time together and have to form bonds to get through the studies. And yet, I still had problems with that after moving here from Finland. Which isn't even that different from Norway. I can imagine that for a foreigner from the US, it must be much harder. How did it go for you? You moved from another country too. Did you have any friends here already? 
No, I wanted to get out of my hometown, out of my country, and start anew. In the end, it turned out that Miko got admitted into the same university. He's my middle school friend. We haven't talked much since then, though. After moving here, I was mostly busy studying. I made some friends along the way, though. Blake, for example. We live in the same dormitory. Met him in the kitchen once, and it turned out that we have a lot in common. In any case, I'm doing good, don't worry. That's good, you know. I really admire you both. Takes a lot of courage to leave everything behind and move abroad completely alone. In my case, there wasn't much to leave behind. My life has gotten much better since I moved here. I still have to settle down, maybe go and meet my neighbors, maybe find some clubs I could join or something like that. You two can't imagine how hard it is to make friends nearing your 30s. You know, I'm really happy you're here with me. What's this? Are you getting sentimental? I had to wait more than a month until I've seen you smile. You must be in a really good mood. Maybe I am. We spent some t we spent some more time talking, joking, and laughing. Until finally both Devin and Rune get up and leave to their respective rooms. It's getting late and the sun is already approaching the horizon, filling the room with golden glow. Wish they hadn't left already. I really enjoyed their company too. I sit a while longer on the chair facing the window, lost in thoughts. Are we going to lake or rune? Oh god, oh god. <laughs> gay lion or gay deer? Either way, gay. Yeah, let's go see rune. Oh, Arvo! Did I space out again? I turn around and see Rune approaching me. What are you up to? Just walking around, looking to see if anything is going on. Same as me, then. Stayed for a bit in my room, but got bored quickly. I didn't come to a camp to sit in my room by myself. That I can do any time. Even if the rooms here are really nice. Yeah. I wish I could enjoy mine. Oh, yeah. You don't really have yours for now. You can visit me sometime if you want. I'd much rather sit with you than alone. That's really nice of you, Rune. Well, if there's nothing better to do, we could go there now if you want. The feet's standing out here anyway, doesn't it? I didn't have any other plans, so... Lead the way. Rune turns around and starts walking towards the residential part of the guest house. Follow him quietly, looking at a short but fluffy tail swaying beside him in the rhythm of the steps. It's almost hypnotizing. Let Arvo T pose for dominance. Here we are. I take out my phone and save the room number to a quick note. Okay, come in. Rune opens the door, which he apparently left unlocked, and lets me into the room. It's roughly the same size as mine, maybe a tad bigger. A guitar is lying on the bed. I assume that's Rune's private one. Some books are laying on his desk, too. Hmm, I never would guess that he's the type to bring books to a camp. Other than all of Rune's private belongings must be already hidden in the wardrobe and... Other than that, all of Rune's private belongings must be already hidden in the wardrobe or dr drawers. What were you reading? Hmm? Oh, you mean those? Both are written by Haruki Murakami. He's a Japanese fiction writer. I really love his style. It's very elegant and deliberate. I don't know how he does this, but in his novels, words flow like a calm, winding stream. Something compelling about them. They have such an otherworldly It's atmosphere. time to drink water. Before reading his books, I never thought it's about becoming a writer. Water. They inspired me a lot. It's time to drink I water. If I could apply that style to some other medium. It's time Let's to say drink a role water. Gamer, visual novel. What the fuck? No. 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 RPG game? That's fine. Visual novel? No. I refuse to have. I refuse. I, I refuse to accept the fact that visual novel characters are able to make visual novels. I refuse to accept that fact. And yet they can. He's self-aware. We don't need another fucking just Monica situation. We don't need just Rune. We don't need that shit. <laughs> can you imagine? Just Rune? And just Monica. Wait. You write? Oh, no, no, not yet. I'd love to try someday. Just, you know how it is. It's always hard to find the time for another hobby. For me, it's hard to find a time for even just one hobby, but I won't say that out loud. 
When I moved to Norway and suddenly found myself in a big city, I promised myself to go out and take some photos every day. But I quickly had to go back on that promise. Too many responsibilities in late classes. If I manage to go out for a photo walk once every three days, I'm happy. I would never guess you're a type of person who plays visual novels either. Rune turns his head sideways. For a moment, I thought I saw him blush, but Rune? Blushing? Come on. Sometimes. I haven't played many, though. I just think the medium itself is interesting. For example, I like the idea of providing your own soundtrack to the scenes. That's not really something you can do with books. A visual novel, when done right, can be much more immersive, too. I've tried some, but none really stuck with me. They were mostly horrors, that, though, and that's not my favorite genre, for sure. And you play the guitar, too? I had no idea. Well, there's not much to speak of, sadly. I can play a bunch of chords and a, know a few songs. That's pretty much it. I nod. I don't know if he's just being humble, though. Prior to now, I thought he just plays on a team and practices in his free time, and that's pretty much it. Now it turns out he reads Japanese novels, thinks of writing himself, and plays music. I know so little about him. Arvo, you don't laugh at me, right? He speaks quieter and softer than before. It's weird seeing him so meek all of a sudden. That's a huge contrast to his usual confident self. What? Of course not, why would I? Thank you. You see, it's a bit embarrassing. Uh, wait, why are you still standing? Sit wherever you like. Um, thanks. I sit down on Rune's bed, as that's the closest piece of furniture. Rune, in turn, leans on the desk. From this perspective, he's even more imposing. So, frankly, my ambition is not to play, but to compose. I have a few songs written, but I'm not really happy with any of them yet. I don't know much about writing music, but somehow this seems even more ambitious than just playing songs. Is he really a deer or a goddamn cyborg? Aren't these a bit too many hobbies? I mean, how do you even find the time for all of that? You have your team on top of your studies, you work on your own music, and you still think of working on a visual novel. Isn't it a bit crazy? It gets a bit overwhelming sometimes, yes, but there's a key to finding the time. It's discipline. I plan my time ahead and keep a schedule, and I don't allow myself to slack off. Clearly, Rune doesn't have ADHD. That's impressive and all, but I hope you don't push yourself too hard. I don't want to see you collapse from exhaustion. Don't worry, I'm a sturdy deer. That... This isn't that much, really, I, and I enjoy what I'm doing. If I was, and I probably wouldn't find the motivation. I'm not entirely convinced, but there isn't much more I can do for him now, is there? Okay, let's say I believe you. Would you play one of your songs for me? If you really want to hear one, but I can assure you that they're nothing special. Maybe even a bit embarrassing. Everybody has to start somewhere. I don't expect you to play me a multi-part masterpiece here. Okay. I'm not used to playing for others, though, so I'll for sure mess something up. He picks up the guitar and hops onto the desk, resting it on his leg, and strums the strings gently with his thumb, playing a mellow chord. Currently, I have a tune to an alternate tuning I came up with. I have only one song written in that tuning, but I like the sound, so it'll, it'll probably work on more. Yeah, but you probably don't know what the alternate tunings are, yeah? Hell, you probably don't even know what the standard tuning is. Not really. Okay, it's not really important. The guitar is a pretty weird tuning, because the strings are tuned five semitones apart. Except for the fifth string, that's four semitones higher than the fourth one. A semitone is the distance in pitch between two adjacent keys on a piano. I think that's the easiest way to put it. Okay, 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 okay. I can actually, I might be able to explain this better than Rune. Let me, let me turn on the webcam. Where's the fucking webcam? I'm, I'm turning on the webcam. I'm turning on the webcam. Where is it? Uh, where is it? Where did I put the, oh, there it is. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to try to explain this better than Rune. Okay, let me let me grab the giant fucking keyboard. Eh, eh. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, let, let me angle this. Okay, so let's say that the note is uh, uh, C. A semitone is one, and he's saying that's five semitones, so it's just one, two, three, four, five, which means that note is F. <laughs> oh, oh shit, I don't wanna fucking drop this. <laughs> Why F and not six? See, music, I don't know. I don't know. It's done with letters. It, it's done with letters. I could con you know what? You know what? You know what? But that's the thing, I 
I typically like to offset because I typically compose in C major, but I like to offset it. So usually it's uh, C. I don't know the. I don't know the exact key I like to compose in, but it goes a uh, C sharp D E F sharp G A B C sharp. That tuning is called standard tuning, and it's pretty much what every guitarist uses. Alternate tuning is anything other than that, and they're usually constructed in such a way that all open strings together perform a specific chord. You can get some more interesting, unusual sounds from that, and they're often easier to play once you get a good grasp on them. I always like when others gush about their interests. It's really sweet in a way. I can feel their excitement about stuff I have no knowledge of. It always makes me want to explore the topic deeper and get into it, too. I guess that passion can be contagious. Tried writing some songs in them with varying degrees of success. Write all chords laid out for that one, but I'm still working on the melodies. Rune strums the strings again, this time pressing on some of the strings to the fretboard with his left paw. The chord sounds sweeter and more joyful than the previous one. Move closer to him, sitting on the edge of the bed, and observe him play. He plays rather quietly and timidly at first, but after the first few chords, I can hear that he regains his usual confidence. Suddenly, I hear a loud twang and something sharp hits my face. I press my paw against my cheek, feeling a stinging sensation there. <laughs> Arva, are you alright? Rune drops the guitar in panic, leaning in and looking at me with worry. Looking at the instrument, I can see that one of the strings snapped and is now dangling limply. I think so. It just stings a little. Wait, show me. He grabs my paw and gently pulls it away from my face, looking for a wound. Presses thumb to my cheek and brushes through the fur, gently observing me closely. Damn, you got a pretty awful cut. Arva, I'm so sorry. Wait here just a moment. I'll be right back. Rune gives me a quick head pat and runs out of the room. I wonder how often this happens. I had no idea playing the guitar can be this dangerous. It frightened me a bit, but now that I know what happened, it doesn't even hurt much. For a moment, I think about picking up the guitar to take a better look at it, but I stop myself when I realize that another string might snap too. I wonder where did Rune go? I looked pretty worried. I hope he didn't panic because of a small scratch. I stand up and look at the mirror that's in the entrance to the room and look at my reflection. There's a small stream of blood trickling down my cheek. Oh! I sit back on the bed heavily and raise my paw to the cut, feeling the wetness under my paw pads. The sight of blood always made me a bit queasy. Okay, I'm back. Rune hurries into the room holding something in his paw. He sits down on the floor in front of me and opens a small bottle he is holding. It's hydrogen peroxide. The cut doesn't look that bad, but there was some blood and strings aren't exactly the cleanest thing ever. Aren't you overreacting a little bit? Definitely not. You don't want to get an infection. Clearly, Arvo has never eaten dirt before. Now lean back and don't move. Not wanting to argue, I do as he says, raising my head and looking at the ceiling. He brushes the fur on my cheek with his thumb again to have a better access to the wound. His touch is gentle, making me shiver slightly. He cleans the wound with hydrogen peroxide and a tissue skillfully. Being an athlete, he probably had his share of cuts and bruises himself, so that comes at no surprise. It stings a bit, and I hiss when hydrogen peroxide comes in contact with the wound, but keep still. From up close, his scent is much stronger. It smells really nice. The cologne he is wearing mixes with his natural scent, woody and inviting, with a hint of jasmine and some blueberries. If someone this morning would tell me that I'd end up in his room talking with him casually, I'd laugh at them. And yet here I am, talking about our hobbies, listening to him play his songs, and now with him kneeling in front of me. Okay, all done. You should wash with some soap later, too. Really lucky that the string missed your eye. Can't imagine how terribly sorry I am, Arvo. It's okay, it's not your fault. By the way, how often does this happen? I never thought that playing the guitar can be such a dangerous activity. Almost never. Unless the guitarist attempts to do some wild soloing, then the highest string can break sometimes. It's my fault for playing in a weird tuning. Just tuned the string too high and it couldn't withstand the tension. I think we'll go back to playing in standard tuning for a while now. You have no idea how much this frightened me. At least I've heard you play. The song sounded quite nice. <laughs> You're only saying that to make me feel better. But thank you, anyway. Too bad you won't be able to play again now on this trip. Oh, I have a spare set of strings, don't worry. I always have one with me in the guitar bag. Strings wear up very quickly, so I change them every month or so, whenever they get dull or rusty. Where did you get that hydrogen peroxide from? I borrowed it from Devin. 
I'll drop by his room later to return it. I told him I just needed it for a moment. Return the bottle ourselves, or tell Rune to do it now? <sighs> oh my god. We're gonna drink it. Drink the hydrogen peroxide. Yes. Don't bother. You've done a lot for me already. I'll go and return it myself. Okay, if you want to. It's no problem for me, though. You're really kind, but I don't want to be a bother. You know well you're not a bother, Ivo. He hands me the bottle and leaves the room with me. I'll go to the common space now. You can join me there later if you want. Mm-hmm, sure. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Arvo. Good to see you again. Hi, Devin. I'm just returning the hydrogen peroxide that Rune borrowed. Did Rune fetch the hydrogen peroxide for you? You didn't tell me anything, just asked for it and left. Something happened to you? Nothing, just a strap, just a scratch from a snapped string. Devin nods, observing me closely. Okay. Thanks for returning it, you didn't have to bring it back immediately. Frankly, hydrogen peroxide isn't the best thing for disinfecting wounds, just water with soap is enough. I just happened to have it in my first aid kit. Huh, why did Rune use it then? Maybe he wanted to make sure that I actually disinfected instead of brushing it off. That sounds possible. No problem, I was passing by anyway. See you later then. See ya. And now we go to the locker room. Check the sauna and the swimming pool just in case, or... Where is everyone? Or go check the common space. Lockers are all open, but maybe I shouldn't assume that it means they're all empty. Take off my shoes and walk further into the locker room. So one of the open lockers is a familiar hoodie covering some other belongings. Bingo! Now where might the bear these belong to belong to be? If he's in the sauna, then maybe I could join him for a quick session. I peek into the corridor just in time to see Bjorn leaving the sauna. Oh, Arvo! I'd ask you if you were going to the sauna, but seeing you in these clothes, I'm guessing you're not. I just wanted to check if you're inside, but I see you're already done. Yeah, yeah two 15-minute sessions are enough for me. Now I need a cold shower. Preferably a bucket of cold water, but I don't know if they have those here. What if I tag along with you? I mean, after the shower. Oh, you're not here for the sauna? Not really. I'm just looking for some company. Been oddly silent any everywhere since dinner. I suppose most of the students are in their rooms. Probably would be as well if I could get into mine. Sure, but you'll have to wait for me for a while. Move back into the locker room, me fully dressed but shoeless, Bjorn wearing only a towel around his waist, all drenched in sweat and panting loudly. You don't have to wait for me here, though. I might take a while to cool down. Eh, I don't have anything better to do. Well, your call. I'm going to pull up the sensor because I don't fucking trust this, even though it's in SFW mode. Better safe than sorry. Well, your call. Okay, we're safe. The bear leaves to the showers and I sit down on the bench, taking out my phone to check the notifications. Sent a message to Miko a while ago, but he hasn't replied yet. He's probably back in his room working on something or taking a nap. Write a quick text to Lake, asking if anything's happening anywhere, and open the web browser. Bjorn is passing, Bjorn is still there in the shower. I wonder how thick his pelt is. Can't be very thick if he's wearing hoodies indoors, probably not thicker than mine. Now that I think about it, I don't think I've seen a bear up close before. Had a few in our town, but I never had any in my class. He's... Uh... Not even the SFW mode can reassure me. No, it can't! My god. I, I don't want to get banned. I, I don't want to get banned. Yeah, he's quite handsome, actually. He's handsome. Tried not to stare much when he was leaving the sauna, but he looked quite good from what I've seen. Always liked that type of build. Big, burly, and great for snuggling into. It would be nice to get to know him a bit better. We didn't talk that much today. He might be a bit of a quiet type, but something tells me we would get along nicely. If I had the key to my room, maybe I'd talk him into a visit. Talking in a more private environment always feels more personal. 
Notification icon displays at the top of the screen, informing, informing me I got a new message. So now I'm with Jorgen and Narim. I might go out in like 15 min. 15 minutes isn't that much. Maybe we could still do something together before the stargazing. Although I might want to stick with Bjorn instead. I don't know if he has any plans yet. Bjorn leaves the shower with the towel wrapped around his waist, water dripping from his body. Huh, so you did wait. Starts to dry himself with the towel, and I turn to the other way to give him some more privacy. Got any plans for after the sauna? Not really. Gotta go rest in my room for a while. I don't mind company, though. Or we could go pay Travis a visit. He has some multiplayer games with him. Both sound good, but it would be nice to spend some time alone with him. Okay, I'm ready. I nod and stand up, leaving the locker room with him. Rune? Walking out into the corridor, we walk straight into the deer. Shh! Shh! Listen. We stand quietly listening in. Do I hear a piano? Definitely. It sounds like an acoustic one. I had no idea there was one here. That's neat. Oh yeah, there was one in the common room. I wonder who's playing it. Only one way to find out. Are you coming with me? Sure. Laugh music is definitely a trait. Arvo? Sure. I like the idea. Even if I looked forward to spending time with Bjorn instead. And I might have an idea who's sitting behind the piano. As we walk towards the common room, Rune leading the way, the music gets louder. I don't know that song, but the playing style reminds me of a certain wolf I know. Walking into the common space, I see it's indeed Miko sitting behind the piano. He notices us entering the room and stops playing, turning in our direction. Why did you stop playing? I. Oh, hello there. I had no... I had no idea you could play the piano too, Miko. That's right, he played piano and was quite good at it. I remember staying with him after classes and listening to him play on the school piano back when we were in middle school. Knowing your way around the keyboard helps a lot with composing. I actually started with the piano and switched to electronic instruments later. We had someone playing the piano in here and came to listen. Maybe don't mind an audience. I don't mind, although don't expect too much from me. I haven't played the real acoustic thing in a long time. He touches the keyboard with such affection that for a moment... I can't help but feel jealous. We'll try playing it. And we're speedrunning again. And Devin! Other than what Rune told me when the three of us were talking together in the common room, I still, so, I still know so little about him. Yet I don't feel intimidated by that feeling, only curious. Now only some fine adjustment... Yeah. It's good to look at the night sky from time to time to remind ourselves of how small we are. Puts things in perspective, doesn't it? Devin? Devin appears behind me, seemingly out of nowhere. A wild Devin spawned. His feline eyes shine in the darkness, the starry sky reflected in them. Oh, sorry for sneaking on you like that. I saw you looking at me a few times. Did you want to ask me something? Professor Arnie kept me busy. Sorry for that. It's nice of him to let you participate, too. You're right. I'm glad he did. How did you like it, by the way? So you've already done. So you're already done, yes? Yeah, I finished just a moment ago. I struggled a bit with the app, but after that, the rest was easy. I used similar tripods for my camera, so I roughly knew how this works. I didn't really know what to expect. I never used a telescope before, but it was much more interesting than I assumed. That's good to hear. Those Professor aren't. That was Professor Arne's intention, mostly to show you that this can be interesting and fun without just dumping facts on you. That worked well then. What about you? Did you enjoy it too? Yes, it was nice. I had a telescope when I was a kid, but it was more of a toy than a real thing. The image quality and magnification on these ones is much better. Young Devin playing with a telescope on the back porch of a lonely house somewhere in Ohio. No, I can't imagine him as a kid. A bit would look cute and endearing, though. And that's just something that doesn't really fit the image of Devin I had in my head. I wonder if his parents bought it for him because he liked astronomy, or maybe they tried to get him interested in science. Oh, but I almost forgot why I came here. So, was there anything you wanted to ask? I gulp loudly. I hope I don't look nervous now because I don't really have a reason to, even if I am. And I'm getting tangled up in my thoughts, and meanwhile, Devin is looking at me expectantly. And I'm only making this weirder. Come on, nothing is nothing weird in asking your teacher if you can sleep in his room. Actually, yeah. Remember the situation with my room? Yes, yeah, I was meaning to ask you if you found a place to stay tonight. Well, not yet, so I thought I could ask you. It's silent for a while, long enough to make me regret asking. Then Devin glances up at the starry sky before looking at me again. Well, if you didn't find anything else, then it's my duty as a teacher to help you. Woo! That sounded oddly formal, but it was a yes! It sounded a bit like he was telling that to himself rather than to me. 
Maybe I shouldn't mention that to him. It mentioned to him that I didn't really ask around. I feel kind of bad about this, but he already agreed. Thank you, really. I didn't expect you to agree. I have a free bed in my room, so it's not a problem at all for me. As long as you're feeling comfortable with that, Arvo. Seems more serious now, looking at me expectantly as if waiting for a confirmation. Of course, I wouldn't ask otherwise. Good then. Let me get back to Professor Arne. We're wrapping up soon. I'll get back to you after we finish, okay? Sure. And he walks away, leaving me here alone. My head is spinning. Okay, it looks like our time is here is up. Thank you all for attending the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even gained a new passion. Supper's already waiting for you in the cafeteria. You're free to take it with you and eat anywhere you like. Have a good night, everyone. A crowd of students starts walking back to the guest house, queuing to the entrance door. Herr Vantlers is sticking up from the crowd. I want to wave to their owner, but he's not looking in my direction. Looks like he's busy talking with... Is that Jorgen? I think so, but I can't be sure. I only saw a pair of pointy ears. Walk in the opposite direction towards Devin and Professor Arne. That went quite well, didn't it? Goodness, it's late already. Devin, will you take the telescopes back into the guest house? I'll be leaving to my room if you're okay with that. Sure, no problem. You can go. Good night, then. See you tomorrow. Good night. Oh, Arvo. I have to help here a bit. Go ahead with the rest and have some food. Oh, hello there. Arvo? Did you want something? Hello, Professor. I actually want to talk with Coach Devin so I can wait. I was just saying goodbye, so I'll leave you two now. Good night again. Rest well before tomorrow. I don't know if you've heard our conversation, but I need to stay behind and tidy up after the stargazing. It'll take a while, so you can go and have some food. Come over to room number two just whenever. I should be there in 15 minutes at most. I won't be locking the door in case you come in when I'm already asleep. This is going in a different direction than I hoped. I thought I could have supper with him, but it but it means waiting for him or convincing him to let me help him, and he is rather unrelenting. Maybe there's a maybe that's a chance to meet with someone else in the cafeteria or go for a short walk before the end of the day. Meet him later or help Devin. Girl. Girl. Is it even a question? I can stay here and help you. Well, it'll go twice as fast if we're working together. There is no need to, really. The telescopes aren't exactly light, and what I would feel bad if I let you do the work I'm supposed to. I'll be over with it quickly. You can go ahead and have some food. Okay, I hope I won't make things awkward now, but I need a better reason to help him. I actually hope I could go eat with you. Everyone else has already left anyway. Oh. I guess we could if you want to. You, we could try catching Rune later in the cafeteria too if I finish this quickly. And if I could help you, it'll go much faster. And I feel bad knowing you're alone here doing all the hard work yourself. Well, that's what I'm here for, you know. But if you really want to, I won't forbid you. But I really can handle it myself. I count the telescopes quickly. There's 15 of them here, and I don't know how heavy they are, but it shouldn't take too long. Where should we take them? To the lobby for now. There's a storage room next to it. Okay, let's not waste our time talking. The faster we finish, the, easy, the earlier we can go eat. Right, and I'm quite hungry already. I swam a, quite a lot today. Some, some extra calories now would be nice. I'm not that hungry yet. The dinner we had was quite filling. You should eat more too, Arvo. Today was a tiring day. Especially if you're not used to swimming. Maybe you didn't swim as much as me and Rune did, but you tired yourself out for sure. Devin goes away to open the door to the guest house, and I approach the closest telescope trying to find the best way to grab it. Fortunately, it's lighter than I thought it would be, and I lift it with ease. It will be easier to carry if you fold the tripod legs together. Oh, right. It's not too heavy for you? I'm not that frail. It's fine, really. Okay, let's go then. I do as Devin said, hugging the telescope tube to my chest with one arm and holding the tripod with the other. I start walking back to the guest house. It's not very comfortable, but at least I have a firm grip on the telescope and can see where I'm going. Almost. Devin is following me, carrying a telescope himself, too. Ah, the warm inside. Careful, there are stairs here. Okay, now unfold the legs and put it down next to that wall. Why aren't we putting them in the storage room? They need to get acclimated first. Acclimatized first. We dismantled them now and put them in the bags. Moisture would build up on them and could cause some damage. They should dry within 15 minutes. Only then they're ready for storage. Well, that was easy enough. Although with 15 of them, that's quite a lot of walking. We moved the telescopes one by one without any complications. Devin mostly stayed silent during that time, likely wanting to finish quickly. Finally, the last two ones. Let's get this over with. Put my paw down on the floor, but the floor isn't there. I forgot about the stairs. Brick! Whoa, careful there. Suddenly, I find myself leaning on Klaus, who appeared seemingly out of nowhere and caught me mid-fall together with the telescope. 
which is now poking painfully at my stomach. How is he even able to support my weight? He looks so slender. Come on now. I thought I used up my limit of bad luck for today. I'm so surprised that I simply stared at him with my snout ajar. Orvo, are you fine? The sound of a drop telescope echoes in the building, and Devin rushes to me, effortlessly lifting me off the cat. His paws are gentle, and yet his grip on my waist is firm. He quickly lets go of me, though, as soon as I'm standing firmly on my own paws. Yes, don't worry, I'm fine. I think the telescope is alright, too. Devin sighs loudly, deflating. Really scared him, didn't I? Goodness, thanks. I'd never forgive myself if anything happened to you because of me. It's fine, really. It's only my fault. I should have been more careful. And, um, Klaus, thanks for saving me. I owe you one. It wasn't really intentional. I was coming back from supper and you flew straight into me. Well, thanks anyway. I'm glad at least it was you and not Coach Devin. I don't think I'd still be intact if he fell on me. Devin looks more taken aback than offended. He even blushes a bit. Blushing Devin is definitely an uncommon look. We definitely should go. It's really late. Have a good night, Klaus. Good night, Professor. And you too, Arvo. Instead of walking down the corridor to the room, Klaus leaves through the terrace door. Hey, that's not the way to- Ah, never mind. I'm just glad he was there to catch you. You didn't hurt yourself? No, I'm fine, really. I'd have been carried away. I can't really look where I'm going when carrying these. I'm sorry, Arvo. I shouldn't have let you help me. But I asked for this, and thankfully nothing happened- Happened in the end. The telescope is fine. It's not about the telescope. I just feel like I've failed you. An uncomfortable silence falls on us. I don't want him to feel bad because of me and my clumsiness, but he seems to be taking this very seriously. You're a great teacher, and it's obvious that you care a lot about your students. Don't feel bad. You've been nothing but helpful today. Much more than any other teacher I know. Thank you, Arvo. It means a lot to me that you think that. I'd better check if I didn't break the telescope when I was putting it down. Looks alright, but I'll have to check more thoroughly later. Heh. <laughs> Okay, we're done here. Good job, Arvo. Thank you for helping me. It's the least I could do to thank you for letting me stay with you today. It's not a problem or anything, really, so don't worry about that. I think we both deserve some good food now. Yeah, after that, I'm pretty hungry now, too. I just hope nobody decided to take our supper. I guess we'll be the last ones there. I hope not. I don't have any food with me. I brought some snacks with me just in case. So don't worry about starving today. But it would be nice to eat something better than that. Slim chance we're going to meet Rune there now. Took us more time than I thought, and he's a fast eater. The cafeteria is almost empty, save for a few students I don't know sitting around one table and chatting. We're going to stop it for the ad when we're ready for the ads. <sighs> yes, it is. Do you know ads, dance? Ah! It always makes me so happy seeing the no ads dance. It always makes me so happy seeing it. Rune is not here. Part of me is happy at, with that as I will be able to chat with Devin more privately. Two unopened bottles of water and paper plates with food are lying on the table closest to us and I assume that this is our supper. Two sandwiches and a slice of some cake. Yup, looks over the last ones. Sorry to hold you back, Orvo. Devin. Are you Canadian or, or Ohioan? Because you've been apologizing the whole evening. Um. Right. I just feel like I'm holding you back. Could have spent the evening with your friends, but you're here with me instead. I'm happy to spend the evening with you, though. I'm exactly where I want it to be, so don't feel that way. Devin turns away from me, looking outside the window, clearly avoiding my gaze. If you say so. Fine. How about we grab the food and eat in our room? Our room? Fine by me. It's quite empty here anyway. We grab the plates and bottles and leave the cafeteria. Lights in the corridor are half-dimmed, giving it a quite intimate feel. Walking alongside Devin, carrying my food. It's completely still and quiet here, the only audible thing being our steps on the soft carpet. I wanted to say something, but the silence here feels too palpable to break it. It's not uncomfortable, though, so I let it be. If anything, I feel relaxed and calm. Devin's tail brushes against mine accidentally once, but after that, he keeps it still behind him. I'd like to close the distance between us somehow. There's so much that separates us. Figuratively and literally. Okay, let me unlock the door. And come in. We're gonna leave off here tonight. No. That's a, that's a terrible idea. No. 
and stay safe. Have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.